The NDC has failed to sign the roadmap and code of conduct to disband vigilante groups. According to the party, the documents fail to include the Electoral Commission and other key stakeholders from appending their signatures. The Peace Council says it is disappointed in the NDC for failing to sign the document. I think that we should go back, get a meaningful document, bring all the other parties involved to sign so that when we then have to implement and update the code of conduct and others, they will be signatories to the document. We got these documents on the 27th of January by our standards. We met, we looked at it, and a letter should have come much earlier to the Peace Council for them to know our exact position as it stands. Uh, that was not done, and there's nothing we can do but apologize at this stage. If NDC is saying that the roadmap involves so many other parties and that it will not be either realistic or appropriate for them to sign the, the roadmap. Our question is that what prevents them from uh, signing the code of conduct? This would have been an important step to the public, the general Ghanaian public to console them, to let them know that their leaders within the political parties are truly committed to the peace of this country. Unfortunately, for some reason, NDC is not in a position to sign now. Other stakeholders that who have been mentioned are not going to be left of the hook in terms of committing themselves to this. We, as Peace Council, will be meeting soon after this. And I stated that in my opening remarks. And we will make sure that these things will be done. That all the other things that has been stated are the job of these institutions anyway. And if we are to sign any agreement, I need to have every Tom, Dick and Harry being there to sign. We wouldn't do anything in this country. I am very disappointed. So that final shot is that of the NPP's rep signing the document, the Code of Conduct, uh, you know, to stop anti-vigilantism uh, in the country. So let's go to uh, Skype now and speak to Adib Sane. He's a security analyst and uh, to uh, help us understand how this could affect the peace process going into the 2020, uh, the December polls, that is. Uh, Mr. Sani, good evening and thank you for joining us via Skype. Clearly, there should be cause for concern because the Peace Council has expressed disappointment in the NDC for not signing. The NDC has also done same. But the NDC's position is that because the other stakeholders have not signed, including the Electoral Commission, they are also not going to sign. You think that is a justified position to share? Um, I strongly doubt it's justified uh, because I've always stated that the crux of the matter so far as um, the scourge of vigilantism is concerned in Ghana has a lot to do with uh, the political parties. Indeed, when they met somewhere in May last year at Pejasi Valley Resort, um, they agreed on certain principles that have been uh, divided into three phases. And when you take a closer look at the document, uh, the first phase A, uh, subsection 3, clearly states that um, they affirm their commitment to the Code of Conduct on Political Vigilantism and sign the code during a public function organized by the National Peace Council with the media in attendance. So clearly, it doesn't state that everybody needs to be there because we do recognize that the most significant uh, uh, part of fighting the scourge of vigilantism in Ghana is to work it out from the political angle. On the other hand, Martin, I would wish to state without mentioning words that I am not particularly enthused by you know, acclamations and affirmations left, right, center, because it is certainly not the first, it's not the second, mm -hmm. and would definitely not be the last. Remember, um, before the, the 2016 election, 
We had similar engagements of the various political actors with the police and some civil society organizations. They all appended their signature in what they called a Magna Carta sort of document, affirming right. their commitment to fighting the scourge of vigilantism in Ghana. Yet, mm. they act godly before the cameras, but they, they don't show the right level of commitment. So I knew from day one that, look, there is no commitment. And I don't believe the fight against vigilantism should be on paper. Mm. It should be you know, uh, 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 done in a manner that we can all see and see the commitment. What, the what, past. what is it Especially that, uh, Adib, what is it that must be done apart from they agreeing to a set of principles and then appending their signature? Apart from that, that is also part of the process. But apart from that, what is it that you would want to see for which you would say that, yes, based on these, I can confidently say that these parties are committed to the peace process? Uh, Martin, first of all, we know these guys are their boys. They help the political parties campaign. They organize rallies for them. They provide them security, especially in the heat of the elections. And so I think the biggest commitment would be for them to jettison these boys, mm. to disband the groups within their fold. When that step is taken, then we'll be convinced that indeed, they are committed, then we can have the other phase two, phase three following. But the cracks of the matter, I, like I indicated, has a lot to do with the politicians, especially who would be on TV and saying all sorts of things as if they are committed. Yet, on daily basis, you have them going around mm. the country, um, uh, 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 inaugurating these groups, financing them, supporting them logistically. Mm -hmm. And when they are in trouble, especially with the police, the same honorables call them to be left, I mean, call the uh, police officers to let the boys off their hook because they are their boys. So but, if but, we make but, a again, I, attempt, Again, on the same tangent, I mean, right from the onset, the political parties came together to say, well, some of them said that they didn't even know these groups or these groups are not part of their parties. So if in the right from the onset you are denying knowledge of the group or their association or affiliation to your party that in the first place means that our early steps into fighting this vigilantism uh, uh you know canker was a misstep do you agree with this assertion well martin you've taken the uh, wind out of my sail from day one i mean that that was a clear indication of the lack of commitment they denied the boys they behaved like they knew them they didn't know them from Adam. Meanwhile, they are their boys, okay? So first of all, we have to admit guilt. We have to accept that indeed, these are our boys. We don't like what they're doing, and we're going to deal with it. It is also up to the politicians to cooperate with the police. We have mm. always spoken about the police being unprofessional, but the problem is when the police arrest these guys, it is the same politicians who call them mm. and tell them, oh, they are my boys. Let them go. Right. If you don't let them go, then you are victimized. So it's a problem with the politicians. Indeed, uh, Mr. Segbefia stated that there are 22 uh, recommendations and just four of it has directly something to do with the political parties. Mm. But I must say, 90% of the issue regarding vigilantism in Ghana has to do with the politicians. So even Certainly. though it is four out of 22, it carries more weight than mm. the others, even though I recognize the intrinsic value of the NS uh, NCCE, right. the Electoral Commission, uh, uh, and other civil society organizations in fighting these scourge. And okay. I wish to also state categorically that from all my studies uh, uh, in and outside of the country, a common theme cuts across most of the conflict situations in Africa, especially, is as a result of uh, misunderstanding with regard to the political or election process from right. Togo to Ivory Coast between 2010 2011, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and a whole host of others. And I don't want to believe we want to go that, that direction. Okay. Thank you so much, Adib Sani, for making time to speak with us. Pleasure talking to you as always. Adib Sani is a security analyst.